Hi, it's Tamar, um, just in the LXP Discrimination Diaries, and I thought it'd be good to do an entry today, um, even though it's over Christmas, so um, I'm not working, so I'm not actively experiencing any <laughs> um, discrimination as such, but I thought I'd just really talk about um, some of the things that help and some of the things that, um, that maybe are a bit difficult at the moment, so... Um, yeah um um yeah christmas day was lovely because i was able to meet up with um you know fa family and that that was that was really nice you know um you know it's been that with the hubby and then there's the usual you know kind of opening a few presents and i, I don't know there's just something really nice about that and obviously you know you kind of have a prosecco or two um i think there might have been a bit of rum as well maybe a gin um chocolate and yummy stuff and you know uh, roasting out all the things that you know you kind of um like but just just a really kind of a lovely feeling and and things like the presence as well it's not so much um you know kind of um it, just having something given to you it's the thought that people put behind it so um there's something about you know realizing that you're loved and um so other people love you and you love them and there's kind of like you know um a few healthy relationships going on there so yeah that was that was a lovely um and then the next day i woke up and obviously um you know for Christmas time, you're kind of like um, not sleeping so well and all, all the rest of it. And I had this awful headache, which I would associate with um, kind of an epileptic aura. So it's kind of like a warning that I'd be susceptible to having a seizure. Although, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it really, but you just know when, when you get it, when you get one of these sleep headaches, you know that um, you're kind of vulnerable to that. So... Um, I spent the whole day in bed and that's that's sometimes I think when you when you experience that that can be the best thing for it so anyway first day I spent in bed next day I spent in bed now I don't really think I needed that whole day in bed I don't know um maybe I did um I'm not too sure when it went from being um sort of epilepsy-ish to depressed-ish and then um, I think I had a third day where I was in bed and that was definitely depression as opposed to epilepsy or depressed mood or low mood, whatever you want to call it. Um, today is day four and let's just say it took me till about midday to get up and I was kind of like heading for another day completely in bed. And what I think has happened is basically... Um, there's been a bit of a knock-on effect of having the sort of seizure auras on the um, day after Christmas Day, which is that um, it's, a, it's a few things. The one is that it was upsetting having that feeling and worrying that the epilepsy wasn't under control and that I could have a seizure, so that was, that was really upsetting. There was also... Um, what else um it's very difficult getting these um feelings because if i have a a seizure then you know i can't drive for 12 months i've already had my license um you know kind of I've, I've had to surrender it and that was really difficult and also it makes it difficult because um obviously my mum died of a seizure on christmas no not christmas new year's day yeah so i had this weird kind of like impending sense of doom or something so you know when people have heart attacks they get this impending sense of doom <laughs> i was getting this kind of like it was completely um what's the word um not <laughs> i'm trying to think of the word it's not um it's when you're not, um, it, it, it wasn't realistic or it wasn't, you know, kind of um, something that was actually going to happen. But 
I just kind of was getting this sense of, um, oh, you know, I'm going to die on New Year's Day and have this. <laughs> It was, it was it was ridiculous i'm kind of embarrassed even saying it but the thing is is you know when you know that that um that something isn't right but like your head's kind of going somewhere else so that was um that was particularly difficult the other the other thing as well was worrying that my um meds aren't, aren't working so of course that means that i'm going to have to have them changed and I was going to have to have them changed anyway because I'm taking lamotrigine and lamotrigine is something that can um, it can cause all sorts of side effects but at the moment um, essentially I'm just getting blurred vision and it's not so much that I need glasses because the blurring kind of goes in and out and you know sometimes it's worse than other times um, generally I'd have it and then it would go but at the moment, it just seems to be there in. It seems to be there all the time, but kind of like sometimes worse than others. Um, and then the yeah, so basically, I need to get that changed. And it's also a horrible um, drug to take. So when it, it's when you're first introduced to it, you um, have to take it in these tiny little increments, like um, twenty five micrograms or or something like that. Um, and you gradually increase it, increase it, and increase it to whatever dose you're on. And the reason why they do that is because you can end up with a life-threatening rash. So basically, if you don't take this stuff in tiny increments, um, you can end up, like, dying. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> great. So, um, yeah, and there was another thing about that, again, that connects up to my mum, which is... Um, this medication was first um i think released sort of like early 90s or or something and uh, my mum was taking some meds i remember when we um because we lived in london and then we kind of moved up when my mum and dad broke up and she got this rash on her face and she had to go to the doctor up here and the doctor up here was like oh well you know what meds he won and um he saw that she was on this lamotrigine he's like what, what the hell is this like you know then he, he looked it up he's like oh this hasn't even been um been oh i don't know like licensed yet or something so it sounds like um <laughs> you know how they know that people have these side effects and stuff like they have to trial it on people first so it sounds as though my mum basically was one of the guinea pigs, <laughs> but without knowing. I mean, I don't know how ethical this research was because she didn't seem to know it was um, a trial drug or something. And um, yeah, she wasn't warned about the side effects. And, you know, if she'd have had a rash and not gone to the doctor, I mean, you know, because you don't always go to the doctor for a rash. Like, you know, what if she died? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently when she went they were eating up her kidneys and all this so like um it's almost like oh cheers mum you took one for the team so you know now that i'm taking it myself um uh, yeah i don't have to die of a life-threatening rash but it's all these little things that kind of interconnect and um that that feels um kind of difficult and the the thing with with this is that um i was having all these thoughts kind of floating around and then i don't know if it was last night this morning i was kind of feeling angry and i didn't realize i was feeling angry um until i was sort of i don't know just responding to a few things on twitter um there was something about taking medication or something and i realized how angry i felt because this um the epilepsy has basically been triggered off by stress again the stress has come from discrimination and trying to fight against discrimination you know i know that <laughs> you know this coming year i've got to go through having my meds changed all over again kind of like risking that um you know just like risk risking health again or things getting worse before they can get better and also you know i'm kind of like I, i'm angry about the whole um the whole not seeing things 
great as well. You know, when I've been wanting to watch the telly or something, it's just sort of can't, you know, sometimes things are blurry and it's hard to see. And um, I just felt angry and I'm thinking, I'm doing these blimmin' discrimination diary things. I've got no freaking idea as to what bloody help they'll be. But, um, you know, I'm doing them anyway because I just feel as though, you know, um, it's got to be recorded somewhere you know it's got to be um there for the people too but i feel sometimes i feel foolish over it sometimes i feel like at the moment kind of angry because i know that this is still affecting me and i know that um there's very little you know i can't it's very unlikely that i'd be able to get um you know, to take things to a um, a tribunal where I can, um, uh, they basically try and and fight. You know, against whatever you want to call it, whether it's personal discrimination, structural discrimination, bullying, harassment, whatever you want to call it, um, whatever the legal terms are that that fit. Basically, I've been treated like rubbish. It's made me ill. Um, I don't care what label, what legal label you put on it. Um, I've experienced it, and you know my body doesn't lie. You could say that I was lying or that I hadn't, um, you know, I was being a bit over the top or something. But then why is my body reacting this way? You know, this has been. I haven't. Um, a lot of the time. I've been in denial about what I've been experiencing and it's been through things like, um, I mean I felt frustrated but when your teeth start fucking crumbling, when your brain flipping goes into a fucking brainstorm up there, when you're, um, you know, when you're, um, it's, it, basically you, your body's screaming at you like, I can't take this anymore. This is, and, and that shows you that something is wrong. So, um, this is real. And the worst thing for me at the moment that I'm so angry about is that um, it's very unlikely that I'd be able to get um, compensation or that I couldn't get anyone to even um, represent me for um, compensation or, I, you know, I don't know how to do it, how to go about it. Again, I'm going to keep on um, trying with these things, um, but uh, you know, I'm just I just feel angry because what am I supposed to do? You know, I'll go back and um, you know, I'm on the holiday period. I should not be <laughs> worrying about this. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I'm not going to. Um, you know, I might do some diaries when I'm talking about oh how good it is to you know be taking care of myself and blah 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 and you know and I thought oh you know a couple of weeks not not worrying about worky stuff and not um you know kind of like getting my head somewhere else away and having a break that'll probably be really good um and you know like <laughs> Yeah, what can I say? My, um, I don't control my eyes, I don't control, um, you know, the head thing, um, the auras, um, you know, um, so even when I've got time off and, you know, I'm not actively thinking about it, it's like, um, my body is there, kind of, it's embedded in there and it's, I don't know, it's really, really frustrating, you know, and I've, I've um, uh, I suppose one thing about coming out of a routine is that I haven't been, um, um, sort of meditating or, um, you know, doing things that I would do normally to, um, sort of get through the day, but then I'm kind of like, at the same time, I'm not having that same stress that, that, um, I would normally be experiencing, so... I don't know. All I know is that, um, yeah, I should be feeling a lot. <laughs> I feel like I should be feeling a lot better than I do, even though, like, I look alright. Um, 
and it's just so much better than I've been in a few days but yeah it's it's tough so um yeah it might even be maybe it's a good thing that I've been yabbering on about it maybe that means that I've kind of like I've got it out and I can um you know enjoy the rest of the holiday period or something so I'd like to think that and um <laughs> yeah so well, what can I say um yeah let's see how it goes <laughs>